welcome to the medicine cabinet build. This is a very cool little project. Part one, frame and mirror assemble, uh, well, build. We cut dados for the mirror to be in inserted into, as well as half lap joints on all the corners of the frame. So if you want to build one of these, make sure that you subscribe to check out the latest of what we provide. This is the latest video of our video build to help bring woodworking to you. We are releasing videos on a regular schedule now of every Friday. This week was late because of a uh, death we had in the family. A very close family member passed away very suddenly. And that I'm dedicating this video build to Bob North, who was a great man and uh, is going to be greatly missed. Let's build this beautiful piece here. Thanks for watching. KC Woodworks for you. We are going to be doing a vanity mirror. As far as this vanity mirror, I have taken this mirror. I took this mirror out of... Hey, look it. You can see yourself in there. You can... I took this out of the bathroom uh, vanity that was there. But what we're going to do is build one out of uh, ash that will match our baseboard. And it will be stained in the ebony just the same. So what I've gone and done is I actually found some old ash stock that uh, was basically just out of my scrap uh, pile or boards that were too small that for me to work with prior. So I ripped them. They are an inch and three quarter wide and five eighths thick. And currently what is going to happen is there will be a dado put down the middle that will accept the mirror. So the mirror will just slide into that dado. And then um, I think I'm just going to do kind of a, uh, a half lap joint for the corners for the frame of the mirror and then as far as the shelving itself it's simple it'll be about three inches wide um, from the wall just so you can put you know the aspirin bottles and whatever people keep in their vanity mirrors I don't have one so I'm not quite sure I do know my mother was quite scary you know when we took it down so Quick note, blade is raised up a quarter of an inch. That is the uh, total inset of the mirror into the frame. Um, so that makes a half inch total. So keep that in mind when you're cutting your pieces to go around the frame. That you need to subtract that half inch um, vertically and horizontally because the total width of the mirror has just been reduced because it insets into your frame. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just remember that the orientation um, of what is going to be front has to be consistent all the way around. You might have the mirror coming out a little bit further on the left side than the right side or a little bit more on the top than the bottom. So if you don't have it dead center, just make sure when you cut your butt and you uh, put the frame on the mirror and glue it that you orientate the same um, distances on either side of your dado to uh, the face. So I'm going to keep cutting these. Okay, so you can see we have a dado for this mirror to sit into. Now, I have to make a second pass because my blade is just slightly, um, just slightly thinner than the mirror itself. Just make sure that it, the frame is tight around your mirror. Not too tight, you don't want to risk breaking it, but the, it just sits snug in there. You, you don't want to have a disaster and seven years of bad luck. Psh! Okay, so there it is. As you can see it just slides into that uh, little dado groove. So once the whole frame is assembled all the way around, it will uh, hold this mirror securely. So we have our stock, which is an inch and three quarters wide, five eighths thick, and it is uh, has this just over an eighth inch uh, dado to accept the mirror. So this will be the pieces that go around the mirror. So the top and sides will be connected with half laps which means half of this face material will be removed uh, from the board and this board and then they will fit together like this. 
Set your blade to your desired thickness, which is half of the thickness of our board. In our case, 5 eighths thick, half of 5 eighths is 5 sixteenths. So I got it reset up, 5 sixteenths, so that it will remove half of our board here. And then uh, I will do that with the opposing sides. Now one thing to remember, because these will overlap each other, one from top, one from bottom, you want to remove half the material from the top of one board, whatever one you choose, and half of the bottom from the other board. So that when you put it on, the leftover material on this one will fill the gap of the material we removed from this one. So I am going to line up. Just going to bring my square up to it and run a mark so that when it is against my miter fence, I can actually see... I can actually see where this line is and line it up just like that. My line is an inch and three quarters in, which is the width of our material. If your boards were two inches wide, then that would mean this half lap joint would be two inches in from the end on both ends of your piece. Okay, so we have removed the material. I uh, still haven't inched fully up to my marks here, but you can get the idea. One here, one here, and they butt up like that and give you this joint right here. Now again, I gotta clean these up just a tad so that they are flush here and here, but looks pretty good. Now keep in mind, I wanted my top runner to be on the front of uh, the mirror frame, so took off the bottom side of my top frame and then took off the top side of my uh, side frame. And that will be the same also on the left and the right. So as you can see, this will fit into here and the mirror will slide up. And I'm gonna end up breaking this thing. <laughs> this is great. Seven years bad luck, can't wait. So this is gonna fit in here in the groove and then our dados fit just like so. So you get this, and it is half lapped. These aren't quite sitting right, but you get the point. So I'm gonna finish all these, and then I'll show you the end product. Uh, we have our our vanity mirror frame here, which is coming along nicely. Um, remember, this is only the first step, but let me point out, after we did the half lap joints around the corners, because I was using scrap and this piece happened to be a little shorter, um, I added these little cherry pieces just as a decorative element. Now, they are slightly thicker. They're slightly thicker, as you can see there, the tiny little edge. Slightly thicker than the rest of the material, so all I'm doing is taking my block plane and running across until I'm very, very close to the um, to the matching height, so this is all flush. Once I get it very close, I'll then go to my random orbit sander here and finish it off. Oh, I was just starting up my rotor to set up my rotor table. This little guy appeared out of nowhere. All right, smack on top. Really kind of eerie because he wasn't there two seconds ago. I turned around and then he was there. So beware of shock critters unknown. Da 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 da. Okay, so the trim molding, or the the shape of the rotor bit we're going to use for the edging around the frame is this one right. Here. This one right here, a classic OG uh, by 316. So we are going to run that across the edging, outside edge of our frame. Now keep in mind, the dado edge, uh, or the edge with the dado, we are just going to do a straight round over, a 1 8 round over, 1 8 round over on the inside edge, inside, outside edge. <laughs> And then we will do this bit, which I just showed you, on the outside corner all the way around. So I'll do that, and then we'll take a look at it. One more quick note before we finish the shaping edges. Make sure everything is, is 
cut flush before you do your routing. This edge, make sure all your joints are tight and they don't overlap. Make sure this one doesn't go past here and this one doesn't go past the top edge and so forth. And once you do that, then you can just go on and keep moving on. So here is what I mean by running these two pieces together. If I had a miter slot in my router table, I would just use that, but I don't. So I think this is the best way to do it. Um, remember to keep your fingers out of the way because you are uh, you do have a couple more boards than you probably should. Um, so as you can see, this edge has already been done with the last corner I ran all the way through. So all I have left is just the very bottom of this cherry uh, add-on here. So I'm going to lay it down in the correct orientation, put it against my fence, and then after I turn it on, I'll put it against my fence, and I will hold these as close to parallel as possible, and just feed them across. So as you can see, once these two are done, you get the nice shaping all the way around consistently, and if there is a slight bit of difference, a bit of sanding will take care of it. Something's not right with this picture, <laughs> and I'm not sure how it happened, but yeah, I apparently made more than one mistake. I was about to tell you I made a stupid mistake and overran my eighth inch round over here, because this eighth inch is just supposed to go around the inner frame, I actually ran it through the whole length, but when you're doing a half lap joint, the uh, full length actually protrudes into the other piece, so yeah, we get this lip here. It's okay, I think I, I can remedy it to make it look okay, it's not a big deal, but this one, I'm just kind of blown away, I just found this one. I had, uh, I've had it together several times <laughs> since I, or before I put this uh, corner edging on, which by the way turned out pretty nice. You see, it's quite decorative, quite pretty, and you these little corner here look pretty darn good. So yeah, there's that. Oh, and yeah, here's one more mistake. Apparently I can't tell my left from right because that says right and it's actually the left side of the mirror. Hmm, who knew? Pretty sure this is my right hand, or is it my left? No, it's my, yeah, it's my right. Right hand, left hand. Hmm. I'm gonna have to have a deep thought on this. Is my face getting distorted? Oh. So, anyways, let's keep going. I'm going to just, well, yeah, I'm going to remedy this situation by just making this dado about a quarter inch deeper. Which is fine, I only wanted it a quarter inch, but it's not going to make a big difference. Um, only difference is the mirror will come in quite a bit further into this top rail, which is fine. So I'm going to do that, and then we'll do the glue up. Hey, so look at, hey, right here, right there, it's all glued up. Looking pretty freaking awesome! Yes, I can't wait to see this thing all done up with the box behind it and then all in action. Um, all the eighth inch round over here, very slight, but it is enough and it really smooths out the look. And then this, uh, was it an OG? I think it was an OG bit um, for the outside edge. And then these little cherry blocks at the end really kind of just make it pop. So I'm very happy with the way it is. I've got... C clamps in all four corners of the half lap just to keep constant pressure down and then I've got some F clamps here two on this edge or on width wise and one length wise just to keep everything pulled in tight to where it's supposed to sit so thanks for watching this build right here it was very cool very fun and I hope you got something out of it the whole point of this channel is to help bring woodworking to everybody and to make it an accessible thing doesn't have to be big and scary. So, thank you to everybody for watching again. And I want to say, you know, you can hit that subscribe button if you really like what you see. And you won't miss any upcoming builds. So, check us out on Facebook, Pinterest, and all the above. And we'll see you later in the next episode. So, thanks for watching. Thank you to everybody for watching. Hit that subscribe button if you really like what you see. And you won't miss any upcoming builds. So check us out on Facebook, Pinterest, and all the above, and we'll see you later in the next episode. Sissy fruit. Sissy fruit. <laughs> this sissy. <is he? laughs> this build has been Brooklyn approved. <laughs>